Hello everybody, it is John and the producer Pippin. You gonna say hello, Pip? I don't think he's very impressed with me. He was just starting to get comfortable. We just finished another another video before this one, and he was very excited. He jumped up on my lap and was most most happy, weren't you? And now he says, look, Dad, he says, I only jumped up here because it was a nice, comfortable lap. And uh, I uh, want to go back to sleep. So I think we'll let him do so. So what's my, <coughs> pardon me, bit of a waffle about? It was interesting. I was, um, some time ago, I bought a humble bundle. I think it was a humble bundle. Or was it a bundle of holding? Anyway, whichever it was, there was a article on, uh, it was a magazine dealing with old school um, gaming. And I think, um, look, I can't remember, but what I will do is, is that I will deal with, I went back and had a look at one of these old books because it made a reference to to one of the old D and D books, one of the the precursors to all the D and D. Now, whichever edition you want to play, there is no problem with which one you want to play. So don't think that this edition is more superior th than the one that you're currently running so don't rush off and grab your pitchfork and say john must be burnt at the stake uh, people tried that many years ago and i keep coming back so don't think it'll work this time around boys and girls or other people yes but it was interesting having a read here and it was saying here that um he said, the, uh, the supplements have fulfilled the need for fresh ideas and additional stimulation, but somewhere along the line, D&D &D lost some of its flavour and began to become predictable. And when was this written? 23rd of April, 1976. Fast forward to 2022. D&D &D is far more predictable than anything else, I would think. Uh, this came about as a result of the proliferation of rule sets. Have we got more rule sets than we can poke a stick at now? And it's the year 2022. More rule sets than we can poke a stick at. More character classes than we can poke a stick at. More spells than a wizard can possibly cast in a lifetime, perhaps. Is that true? Who knows? Yes, and while this was great for us as a company, this is them, this is the uh, people from Wizards of the Coast, or sorry, TSR as it was known in the time, it was tough on the Game Master, or shall we call them DM as it was written back then. When all the players had all the rules in front of them, it became next to impossible to beguile them into danger or mischief. Which is part of what the Game Master's all there for, isn't it? If a player has everything out in front of them. If they know every monster, every uh, treasure, every magic item that they can possibly get, they're not really going to get fooled, are they? And particularly when you get those players that decide that, excuse me, but um, my Vorpal Blade of such and such has this ability. You can't say that it doesn't have this aspect. Well, look, I'm the Game Master. And if I decide... That, um, that this magic item doesn't have that capacity. Well, it doesn't have that capacity. And this is the problem, is, is that we have the rules lawyers within our games now who decide that you must stick adamantly to what is written. And sadly, I tend to find that it is Americans who are sadly the worst offenders of what is written as the... Um, as the people who tend to be a proponent of that. They tend to not like loosely written rules for some reason. Don't ask me why. Particularly when it comes to things like tournaments and, uh, and things like that. They like things very clearly written out. And you will find the greatest 
greatest rule lawyers amongst them, particularly when it comes to wanting to win, which is not what the concept for role playing is, particularly when you are playing role playing games. There are no winners, there are no losers, there is only you out there having fun, which is what role playing should be. And uh, it was just interesting going on having a look at what was written back here in 1976. And, um, you know, it, it came down here at the end where they were talking about um, Oh dear. Uh, see, this is the problem. I get carried away and then forget where it is that I've, uh, what I was going to, uh, to write. Um, but yeah, it, look, it's, it's interesting if you go back and have a look at what people were complaining back in 1976 or a lot of the things that people are complaining about in 2022. So not a lot really has changed. So it's, again, people complaining about, you are destroying my role-playing game because you're doing these things. So it's, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. So it doesn't matter really where you are as long as you're enjoy enjoying what it is that you're doing. So if you want the most... Uh, complex of role-playing systems go for it knock yourself out if you can find the people that are willing to support you and play with that sort of complexity then look honestly there's nothing wrong with it however if you like um, you know an open style system where you're more interested in the role-playing aspect of dare I say it role-playing then there's nothing wrong with that either. You know, there's nothing wrong with any edition of a role-playing game. Admittedly, I am going backwards in time because I have found that um, Wizards of the Coast is producing very substandard material. In my, This is in my opinion, people. Please take that in, into account. And my opinion, as everybody knows, is not worth anything because nobody really listens to an old white man anymore. So, look, it's up to you as to how you want to do things. So, look, thank you very much for listening to my bit of a rambling waffle. Until next time, signing off from me and from his lordship, who is refusing to even budge at the moment. He's gone to sleep. I can hear a slight snore. It's wonderful, actually. I would... You know, my little man came to me. I'm now digressing now. Uh, my little man Pippin was a um, was given to my daughter from one of her uh, partners that she had, and uh, they parted ways. And then my daughter moved up to the uh, Sunshine Coast. I live in Queensland, and uh, the Sunshine Coast is like our Gold Coast, uh, except that it's less developed. So my daughter went up to the Sunshine Coast and she left Pippin with me. And he has been a godsend for me because uh, my mental health is incredibly precarious. You wouldn't tell from the person who puts these videos up. But uh, he basically keeps me safe and sane for most of the time. So um, he is uh, has been with me now nearly nearly seven years now. It's um, He's been a wonderful, wonderful companion for me. And uh, if, you, if you have an animal companion, cherish them and love them because uh, they are the greatest of friends that you can have. So anyway, until next time, signing off, the Honourable John.